Он просто берет сложнейшую задачу и может так и типа выпендривается. Кстати, прикольно, у нас такого нет. У нашего профессора нет усадого. Ой, почему? Okay, so one way of finding the beta for the company is using the regression. We looked at the regression. Okay? So put the points, find all the different data points, put on the graph and find the regression. Slope of the regression tells us the beta, the relationship. This is using the historical data, right? The price is going up of Disney, the price is going up of the stock market, then yes, Re good relationship, okay? If it's the opposite, negative relationship, historically. However, there is another way to calculate the beta, and that is called from the bottom up. So, this is the better way to calculate the beta. Okay, the historical one is the easier way. We can find that on Yahoo Finance. If we go to Yahoo Finance, and uh, we just type in any company, we can find the beta there. And that is based on the Bloomberg service. Every, every place has their own way of calculating the beta. So Yahoo has their own information and their own way of calculating the beta. But it's a regression beta, historical beta. So if we look at Microsoft, what kind of beta do you think Microsoft has? Guess a number. 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Key statistics, right? Stock price history, beta. 1.06. Slightly more risky than the market. In the past, it would have been higher, but it's followed, Microsoft is also following the market quite closely, okay? Uh, tell me another company, any company? Nike. Nike. What's your what's your guess for Nike? Beta zero point five one. Okay, so Nike is actually not as risky as the market. Do you stop buying shoes, runners, if the economy is bad? Huh? If the economy is good, do you go out and buy lots of new shoes? Yeah, and sports clothes? Huh? Okay. So clothes is like one of those things, it's a necessity of life, right? Like food and electricity and those kind of things. Okay? Nike is a clothing company, so it's not as risky as the other. People are still going to buy clothes. Right? Not even if the economy is not going well. Okay? Apart from some mean people like me, I don't buy clothes very often because I don't like spending money. But most people are going to be buying clothes. How often do you buy clothes? How often do you buy clothes? Hmm? You, yes? Hmm? Every day, new clothes? Huh? Every week? Every month? Every month? Do you buy or your mother buys? Huh? Do you buy the clothes or does your mother buy the clothes? <laughs> you buy the clothes? You, you decide? My mother bought me my clothes until I was a university student. <laughs> Even after I was a university student. So I got teased by the other boys at school. Because she also didn't like spending money. So she always bought the wrong size because it was cheaper, right? In the sale. Everybody already has the normal size, they already sold, so in the sale they just have some strange size that nobody bought. Then my mother bought that for me. <laughs> and she told me, oh that's okay, it's okay, it looks fine. It looks fine. But then I went to school, the other students didn't think it looked fine. Just my mother thought it looked fine. <laughs> right? And also my mother used to cut my hair until I was... 18, so you can see now it's not. Even now, my hairstyle is not that stylish, right? <laughs>
Just I was used to getting my hair cut by my mother until I was 18. To save money. What, what could I do? Does your mother cut your hair? No, you've got stylish hair. You've got stylish hair, right? So I don't buy clothes very much now or cut my hair. Maybe I got that habit from when I was a teenager. But most people buy clothes often. Okay, another company? 3M. Hmm? 3M. What is 3M's business? Post it. What do you think their beta is? 1.05, very similar to Microsoft. Okay? So this is the regression beta that we're finding here on Yahoo. So we're looking at the past and what is the relationship of the stock with the S&P? Okay? Uh, tell me a risky company. What do you think is a risky company? We could search for a risky company. What would have a high beta? Facebook? Is Facebook risky? Hmm? Don't think it's risky? We can check and see. Did Facebook stock change a lot or not change a lot in the history? Not too bad. 0.79. So. <coughs> QT is probably another name for the company, right? <coughs> no, just that, that's just a brand name. So. Esther and Laurent? What? No. You want to check Korean Air? Is that linked in on the is that on the US stock market? Korea Electric Power Company is on the US stock market. Yeah. Uh, Korea Electric Car Power Company. Okay, we can see 0 0.54, right? Electric power. Very stable, just like clothes. So that's what we're going to talk about now, the bottom of beta. When we find the bottom of beta, we look at the fundamental of the com company. What are the fundamentals of the company? What kind of business is it in? Okay, and then we make our own beta, not looking at the history. So a little bit like the historical premium and the implied premium. One was looking at the history, one was forward looking. It's the same here. We look at one beta based on the history, how the returns of that co individual company change with the stock market, and we look at one beta based on the business it's in. So, uh, let's have a look at some examples here. Beta of less than zero. Harmony Gold Mining. Okay, gold mining minus 0.15 beta. Okay? So, if I invest in gold, I'm going to have, let's say it's going to be 2% for the US bonds, plus it's 0 0.15 minus 0 0.15 multiplied by 6. So that's going to be 2% plus minus 0.8, okay? Equals 1.2%. So what this is saying is that by investing in gold, it's actually adding less risk to my portfolio than the US government bonds. Because we assume that I'm investing in the market portfolio, what this is telling me, when the mark, when the S&P is going up, gold is going down. Okay? When the S&P is going down, gold is going up. So, what that means here is shown in numbers. Okay? What we're interested in with this beta is does, my, does this company add risk or take away risk from the market portfolio? I'm already invested in the S&P, okay? So does this stock or company add or take away risk? So if we look at just the gold mining company, it's taking away risk from the, my other investments. I already invested in the S&P, 
the gold company is taking away risk. So, but I'll, clearly my return will also be lower. If the market portfolio is going up, my gold will be going down. Okay? So it's going to make a lower risk, but also lower return. Do you understand that idea? By investing gold, lower risk, S&P is going down, gold is going up. I don't lose much money. I just lose how much? 1.2%. Okay? But if S&P is going up, then gold is going down. So I don't make as much money. Okay? I make less money. So that's what this is telling us. We have beta less than one. Oil. We saw the electric company. Clothes. Cigarettes. Do people stop buying cigarettes when the economy goes bad? No. No? no? Right, do you smoke? You're laughing? Hmm? In Korea, they increased the price of the cigarettes. Right? Did a lot of people stop smoking? No. Hmm? No, we carried on. Carried on? Yeah. Data off between one and two. GE, Microsoft, Quest Communications. Beta more than two, Bulgari. Bulgari luxury bags. Okay? So, S&P, that means that S&P is going up, going down. Bulgari is going down even more. Straight down, right? S&P is going up, Bulgari way, right? Straight up. So, it's adding on more risk to my portfolio. So it depends on, do you like risk or you don't like risk? Okay? What do you want to invest in? You're a pensioner. What, what are you going to have in your portfolio? The S&P 500 and gold or the S&P 500 and Bulgari? You're a pension, pensioner. Do you understand pensioner? Yogan, Badun, Saram. Are you going to be investing in the S&P 500 and gold or the S&P 500 and Bulgari? Gold. Gold, right? You don't want to lose all your money, okay? So you want to have a stable situation. So it depends on people's risk idea, okay? So we have these different types of com companies with different fundamentals. So when we're making our bottom-up beta, the first thing we're going to look at is the product type, the industry, okay? So the beta value depends on the sensitivity of the demand for its products and services. Okay. Do you understand sensitive? Are you very sensitive? No. Hmm? You're not sensitive? Are you sensitive? Then you're angry because you feel bad because I made a joke about Zootopia? <laughs> huh? Did you cry at the break time? Outside? No? You're not that sensitive? Okay. Do you understand sensitive? Yes. Yes? So, anyway. Is the company sensitive to the macroeconomic factors or not? Right? It means that if the economy is going badly, is the company very affected? Right? Or not very effective? How sensitive is the company to the, ma to the economy? Okay? Cyclical companies have higher betas than non-cyclical. Cyclical means the economy is going well, we go up. The economy is going badly, we go down. Non-cyclical firm, it doesn't matter about the economy. Electric company, non-cyclical. It doesn't matter about the economy. Okay? Do you understand cycle? Yeah. Recycle? Yeah. Cycle? Yeah. Cyclical means going up, going down, going up. But electrical company, just straight. It doesn't matter about the com economy. Firms which sell more discretionary products will have higher basis than, than firms that sell less discretionary products. So discretionary product is something that we choose to buy. What would you choose to buy that I don't buy, maybe? What would you choose to buy that I don't buy? What do you think that you buy that I don't buy? Um, <laughs> nice clothes? <laughs> okay, that's true. Anything else? Hmm? Coupons for what? Haircuts. For haircuts? <laughs> nice haircuts. Okay, anything else? I still buy haircuts and clothes, so even if they're not good. So something that you buy that I don't buy. 
PlayStation, right? So maybe I don't buy a PlayStation. I don't have a... My wife has a very old PlayStation, but I don't have a PlayStation, right? And you have a PlayStation. So, that's a discretionary product. It means that it's not a product that everybody has. Okay? You couldn't say smartphone, right? I have a smartphone. Okay? Almost everybody has a phone. Right? It's not a discretionary product. Okay? Clothes. Not a discretionary product. But something that a lot of people don't buy is a discretionary product. Okay? We choose to buy. So firms which sell discretionary products, they are going to have higher betas than firms that sell less discretionary products. Why? Because I'm selling clothes, people are buying clothes, it's not a choice. But I'm selling PlayStation, the economy is not going well, maybe you decide not to buy the PlayStation. Okay? So the PlayStation will have a higher beta than the clothes company. So let's have a look at this question. So phone, we said the phone is non-discretionary in the United States, in Korea, in Western Europe. Does everybody have a phone? Right, so it's not discretionary in Korea. However, in much of Asia and Latin America, there are large segments of the population for whom phone service is a luxury. So Africa, some parts of South America, they don't have any phone. Okay? So which of the following is true? Emerging market telephone companies should have higher betas than developed market telecom companies. The other way around, or the betas should be the same. So discuss with your partner. Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Who thinks the first one? Hands up. Who thinks the second one? Who thinks the third one? Okay, so let's think about it. In which country is phones discretionary? Developed or emerging economy? Emerging economy is discretionary. Is discretionary risky or less risky? Riskier. Okay? So the emerging market telecom companies should have the higher betas. Okay? Because they're selling a discretionary product. In the developed country, they're not selling a discretionary product. Everybody's going to buy a phone. Okay? Do you understand the difference? If the economy goes badly in Korea, are you going to sell your phone? Huh? No. Are you going to give up having a phone? No. Tell your mother, it's okay, you're spending one man one a month on my phone. I want to help, don't, don't pay for my phone anymore. Are you going to say that? No. Maybe not, right? But in some countries, people won't get the phone, right? Or give up the phone, it's too expensive. So, it means, which is better for the phone companies? Which is more stable for the phone companies? Developed, right? Developed country is more stable for the phone company. Okay? Therefore, it has lower beta. Okay, so the type of business is the first determinant we're going to look at when calculating bottom of beta. Discretionary products, higher beta. Okay? Sensitive products, products which are sensitive to market changes, higher beta. The next one is operating leverage. Okay, operating leverage is uh, how much of the total costs of the company which are fixed and how much of the, co the uh, co 
company's cost which changes. Okay? So, all the things remaining equal, companies with bigger fixed costs have greater variability in their earnings, which is going to result in higher betas. Do you understand fixed cost? Variable cost? Fixed, fixed means like go down. Is that correct? Young Lee, variable, changing. Hmm? Go down. What's the opposite of go down? Hmm? Go. Hmm? Young Dong. Young Dong. Is that correct? Young. Dong. So variable and fixed. Okay. So if we have a high fixed cost, uh, then it's going to be more risky. If we have more variable cost, it's going to be less risky. So let's look at an example of a restaurant. Okay, we have a restaurant and we do deliveries. Okay, we're a chicken chip. Okay? So we buy some small car. We buy a small car for deliveries. Okay, let's say we're big, we buy four small cars. Okay? To do the delivery. We buy them year one. Okay? Then next year. Business is bad. Okay? Revenues are down. We don't need four cars. Now we just need two cars. Okay? So we have to sell the other two cars or else just leave them without using them. We sell them, we make a big loss. So we just leave them there without using. So we have a high fixed cost because we have to pay. Let's say we got a loan. We got the loan, okay? So we need to pay the loan. And we need to pay the loan here. Even though we're using two cars, we need to pay the loan for four cars. So what would you suggest to the company? What would you suggest to the company to do? To make lower fixed cost about the cars? Leasing, right? So let's say on the other case, in year one, instead of buying, we lease. Over here, we lease. Do you understand lease? So we lease four cars. Then next year we only need two cars. Next year we just lease two cars. Which com company has the higher fixed cost? A or B? A bought, B leased. A has a higher fixed cost. Okay. Which company is riskier? A or B? A. Why is A riskier? Yes, yeah, so they have to make the low payments here, right? Whereas these guys can adapt, they can be flexible, and they can change that they don't have to make the low payments. Okay? So that's one of the main arguments for leasing, flexibility, okay? So if we, have, if we are a company, we can't avoid it, and we have very high fixed cost, we have a higher operating leverage, and we're going to have a higher beta, okay? So... One way we can measure operating le leverage is look at the variability of earnings before interest and taxes, or profit. So we can look at the percentage change in profit over the percentage change in revenues. Okay? This tells us how quickly the earnings change as the revenue changes. The higher the number, the greater the operating leverage. So we look at some examples. Okay? So. This is Disney, and first we look at Disney, then we look at the example in the book, a bit simpler, of the restaurant, okay? So Disney had this much sales in this year, and this much in this year, so every year the sales went up or went down by so much, okay? And then their earnings went up, so sales is revenues, their earnings went up or went down. So sales minus cost equals uh, EBIT, right? So we have the percentage change in sales and the percentage change in EBIT. And then we get the average over the time, okay? Down here we can see the average is 13% if we take from 1987, or 9% if we take from 19, 
96 and 13 and 11. So then we put in the percentage change in EBIT over the percentage change in sales. So 13.26, average change in EBIT over 13.73. And we get 0 0.97. Okay? And this is tells us the operating leverage. This is the way of calculating the operating leverage. But what we do with this number is we have to compare it to something else. This number by itself is not going to tell us anything. We have to compare the operating leverage of Disney to other companies. Okay? For other similar companies. For other entertainment firms, the operating leverage is 1.15. This means that Disney has a lower fixed cost than its competitors. Okay, so uh, let's look at the example in the book. So on page 54 in the book, we have a table. So again, you can see the equation here. Okay, uh, we talked about on the first paragraph, I gave the example of not, not a lease, the cars, but the rent. Some companies buy the building, some companies lease the building. Okay, so the, in this case, the company that leased the building could uh, have the lower fixed cost. So, if we look at the table, we can see restaurant A has a fixed lease. Fixed lease means like long term or 10 year lease. Restaurant B has a variable lease. Variable means they can change the lease. So if we look at restaurant A, we can see their sales. The sales are the same for restaurant A and restaurant B, okay? But we look at the lease in the second column, okay? In year one, 80,000, sorry, the sales. Year one, 80,000. Year two, 60,000, restaurant A. Restaurant B, year one, 80,000. Year two, 60,000, exactly the same, right? But the lease for restaurant A, year one, 30,000, year two, 30,000. They made a 10 year lease. So every year it's going to be 30,000, okay? But restaurant B just made a one year lease. So year one, 30,000. Year two, the economy is going very badly. Korea has an economic crisis, okay? So there's no demand for the buildings. So the price of the lease goes down, okay? So we can see that in year two for both restaurants, their sales went down by 20,000, because the economy was worse, okay? But restaurant B, the lease got cheaper because they had a variable lease, not a fixed lease, okay? So if we look at the operating profit, the EBIT, we can see that's 50,000 for both companies in year one, but in year two, for restaurant A, it's 30,000, and restaurant two, restaurant B is 40,000. So we do our equation, of the operating leverage, which we find the change in operating profit is going to be 40% for restaurant A and 20% for restaurant B. Change in sales is the same for both restaurants. Okay, so restaurant A has an operating leverage of 40 over 25, which is 1.6, and restaurant B has an operating leverage of 20 over 25, which is 0.8. So we can see that the operating leverage is lower for restaurant B, okay? So it means that restaurant B is lower risk than restaurant A, okay? So this is just helping to explain this equation. This equation, operating leverage equals change in operating profit divided by change in sales, okay? We can see with this example, restaurant B didn't have as much change in profit. Right? Why? Because its costs were more flexible. So its revenue went down, but its costs also went down. So the profit didn't change that much. Okay? Uh, the change in profit was just 20% between the two years. But restaurant A had fixed costs. It couldn't, even though its revenue went down, its costs were still high. So there was a big difference in the profit between year one and year two. 40% difference. So we're using this, change in profit over change in sales. Okay, they both still have the same amount of sales. Okay? So the reason for the difference in, in profits is one has fixed costs, the other one has variable costs. So 
we can do if we put the change in profit over the change in sales, that will tell us more or less is the company ha have variable costs or fixed costs. Do you understand that equation? Right? It's telling us does the company have variable costs or fixed costs. We can see that revenues did change, profits changed to high fixed costs. Revenues changed, profit didn't change. It means that the company was able to adapt and be flexible. Even though their revenues went down, their costs also went down, so the profit didn't change. They still made a profit. Okay? So that's what we're looking at there. And we just have, we get a number. This number by itself, operating leverage means nothing. We have to compare that to other companies. Okay? If we compare it to other companies, we can tell. Is our com company have a high or low fixed cost for the type of business we're in? Some businesses have very high fixed costs. Some businesses have no fixed costs. Okay? So it depends on the industry to see whether we have high operating leverage or low operating leverage as a company. So do you have any question about operating leverage? Operating leverage telling us how much fixed and how much uh, variable costs the company has? So, <clears throat> let's look at your book and question number 10. So calculate on page 58. So calculate the operating leverage for each of these firms. Okay, so you have a table like that we just did for the restaurant. Okay. So number 10, you have firm A, firm B, okay, in your book, page 58, okay? So look back at the example we just did and calculate the operating leverage for each company. While you're doing that, I'm going to call the attendance to check the attendance today, I think. <coughs> so, Shim Sung Min. Kim Yeran, Ron, or oh, sorry, Pak Kwe Sam, Yi Chi Hun, Im San Yok, Chan Che Hong, Cho Chan Yang, Han Gyeong Jung, Kwok Ju Mi, Kwok Ju Mi, Kim Song Yang, Kim Song Yang, Kim Yu Hyun. Where's Kim Yu Hyun? Uh, Kim Yu Mi. You need to say here so I can hear you, okay? Or yes, you can say here or yes. Kim uh, Na Do Yang. Do Ji Yun. Pak Ji Yun. Bak Chi Hun, Bak Ye Won, So Min Gyeong, Yang Ha Yang, Oh Song Mi, Oh Chang Hu, Yoo Su Yang, Yi Dong Yun, Yi So Bi, Yi A Ji, EAG2, EONG, or E on Chan, E Chang Yin, E Chin Sun, E Hong, Chang Su Wan, Chong Yu Jin, Chong Song He, Chong Song He, Chong Yun Ji, Zhou Mingyang, Chui Biao, Chui Biao, Chui Biao not here. How do you say discrimination in Korean? Ah, Chia Biao, not Chui Biao. Chui Su Ji, 
Trey Suji. Trey G Sop. Trey G Su. Trey Kyan Gu. Kyo Se Min. Huang In Yang. Huang Jung Ho. Ernest. Uh, Bat Tran. Kim Yoon Yoon Jung. Wan Cha Hyang. Angelina. Hoon. Eon Ji. Trey So Young. Trey Wei Jung. Yan Sung Wan. Cho Wan. Yi Myung Woo. Sa Juk. John Sung Min. John Sung Min. Yi Jung Su. Kim Eun Ji. Francesca, Ezra, Artem, Chen Li, Chen Li, Chen Li, not here. Okay, so we can see that there is a problem today. There are some students whose attendance is checked here, but they're not here. Okay, so it means that every class I will need to take the attendance, start taking the attendance, and the students who put their name down who are not here is going to get some negative results in the attendance grading. Okay, so the person who checked the name for the person who's not here, you didn't do them a favor. Instead, you did them a disfavor because they're going to lose points on attendance. So please don't do that again. Okay. Also, I can see the number of students. I can see on the list how many students. There are 60 students. If I look around the room and there are just 50 students, right? It doesn't take that long to count the students. It's quite obvious. So please don't check the name of the students who are not here. Okay? Okay, so we should be doing the question number 10 on page 58. <laughs> No positive or negative. It's change. Right? Just percentage change. It changed by that much. It doesn't matter whether it was a positive or a negative change. Yeah. 
это ты правый вектор на Украине. So we should be able to follow, right, the table. First we need to find the change in operating profit for firm one. And then the change in sales. Okay? That's very simple. So there shouldn't be people with blank here. Right? Operating profit year one and year two. What's the difference between year one and year two? What's that in a percent? Okay? Second one, change in sales. What's the percentage change in sales? So then you find out for firm B, okay, and firm A, and then you look at the equation, operating leverage equals, divide the change in profit percent over the change in sales percent, and you should get a number, which number is higher, okay, so everybody should be able to do this question. So, the change in operating profit is going to be year one, we have 6,000, right? Year two, 7,000. Okay? What's the difference? What's the difference between 6,000 and 7,000? 1,000, okay? What's that as a percent? Are we going to use 1,000 over 6,000 or 1,000 over 7,000? Over 6,000, the first number, right? So to make a percent, what's that in percent? 16.6 or 16.7 percent, right? That is the change in profit. What about the change in sales? 9,000 and 12,000. This is profit. Change in profit. Change in sales. Okay, so we have the same. We have a number for year one, 9,000. We have a number for year two, 12,000. What's the difference? 3,000 over 9,000 equals 33.3%. Okay? Divide 16. So we have to see which one goes on which line, right? So we check our equation, operating profit on the top line, sales on the bottom line, okay? So 16.7 divided by 33.3 equals, what's that answer? The change in profit over the change in sales. What's the answer? 0.5, right, or less, okay? And then what? We do the same thing for firm B. What was the change in profit for firm B? What percent? 60. 60. What was the change in sales for firm B? 36. 36. What is the operating revenue for team B? 60 over 36. 1.7. 1.7. Which company has the higher operating leverage? B has the higher operating leverage. Okay? Which company is more risky? B, right? Which company has lower fixed cost? A. So we can see that A, when its profit went up, its cost also went up. So obviously its costs are variable, right? B, its profit went up a lot, but its costs didn't change. Its cost target changed. Its profit changed by 4,000, but its cost only changed by 1,000. So it means this company has fixed costs. Whether they make the profit or the loss, the costs are staying the same. This company has variable costs. Profit goes up, cost goes up. Okay? Uh, so if we think of the uh, restaurant, right? If we have a lot of things like leasing, we can have variable costs. We have more customers. We need to lease another car. Our costs are going to go up, even as our profit goes up. If we think of a company like airline, right? The airline, they already have to pay for the airplane and the pilots and all the staff. So their customers go down, or their customers go up, right? Anyway, they still have the fixed cost of the airline. 